All right, so today we're going to talk about the Model 8140 and recent changes we've made to this product, and that's to include pressure ports for airflow measurement. Uh, the reason that pressure ports are going to be important when you're doing airflow measurements is, number one, you never know where your inlet hood is going to be located. Here we're at a table and it's really nice and convenient. However, it could be two stories up. You have to get up on a ladder and hold a pressure flow hood up against a house, or it could be lower and, and convenient to stand, but now you've got either siding or an uneven surface or maybe a patio wall that is right next to it and you can't get your flow hood next to it. So sometimes taking the airflow at the inlet hood is not the way to go. So if you don't take the measurement at the inlet hood, the other thing that the ResNet 380 standard allows is for you to take a mid-duct measurement. And there's a couple ways to do this. Number one, the standard says to use an airflow station. That really requires that you have a hard piece of sheet metal somewhere in your duct system. This system is flex duct, as most are, and it's not always convenient to put an airflow station. The other thing that we see is, is contractors and sometimes radios will use a pitot tube poke it through the ductwork into the duct and try to get an airflow measurement. Uh, this is really an inaccurate method of measuring airflow, for, and, it, and it's bad for a couple of reasons. First, it puts a hole in the duct, so now you've got a potential leak point, you've got potential condensation. The second is, in order to take an accurate measurement with a pitot tube, you need to have nice straight flow in your duct. So any bend that you have prior to taking this flow measurement is going to make that measurement pretty invalid. So the use of that is, is not recommended. So the other method that the ResNet 380 standard allows is for you to use a manufacturer supplied measurement instrumentation. And that's what we're going to talk about today. In the new model 8140, we've added pressure ports to the system to allow those measurements to be taken after the product's installed. And that's important. Uh, contractors, installers will measure it to set up the system properly. That's very important but then raters have to come in and verify the measurement and usually that's done after all the installation is complete and no one wants to have to try to remove insulation to take measurements out of ports that might be in a collar um, or to try to install an airflow measurement station that can just screw up the system so you don't want to install you don't want to go in and modify the system after it's installed so these pressure ports allow you to take the measurements after the units installed and it's super simple all right so to take airflow measurements uh, with the 8140 after it's been installed is very easy. We're going to use a pressure measuring uh, gauge here and we're going to take the positive side of the gauge and we're going to connect it to the outlet port of the 8140. Then we're going to take the negative side of the pressure gauge and we're going to put it to the inlet side port of the 8140. And notice that our uh, instrument is on so now we've referenced zero. Now we're going to go ahead and start the unit. So to test the unit, we've implemented a test procedure into the control of the 8140. To access that, we're just going to press and hold the select button, and that will give us two options, either setup or test. And we toggle between those options using either the up or the down button. So we'll select test, and what that will do is that it will start the fan. After the fan starts, you want to give the 8140 about 45 seconds because there is a built-in damper into the 8140 uh, that takes about 45 seconds at most to open. So once the damper is open and the pressure reading stabilizes, here we see it's 0.33, that indicates your airflow. So we take that pressure, 0.33, we come to the table that's mounted right on the unit, and we can see that we have a 0.3 and a 0.4 reading. The 0.3 reading is 205 CFM, the 0.4 is 175 CFM. Our reading is 0.33, so it's pretty close to the 205 side. I would estimate our airflow here to be 195 CFM. The most important part about any ventilation installation is proper setup. And proper setup requires you to know the amount of air that's required and the amount of air that your system is delivering. So we just went through and measured how much the system is delivering, and we decided it was 195 CFM. The amount of airflow that is required, you either, need to rem you either need to have memorized the table in the code book, you either know the equation from ASHRAE 62.2 standard, or you can simply use the 8126 controller and with the simple setup feature that allows you to input basic information like the number of bedrooms and the square footage of the site to be able to determine that flow. 
So let's go ahead and set up the controller for that installation. So to set up the control for the installation, we're going to enter the setup menu. To do that, press the any button to turn on the backlight, and we're going to press and hold the select button for five seconds, and that'll enter the setup menu. And you can see the word set. So we're going to select the setup menu. This is just heat cooler, heat pump equipment. We're going to skip that. Now for this installation, let's assume that we have a three bedroom, 2,500 square foot house. And that's what we're installing this ventilation system in. So we're going to change this to three bedrooms. Enter that. And we're going to change the square footage here to 2,500. 2,500 square feet. Now we put in our measured airflow and we just measured it and it was 195 CFM. So let's change this to 195. We'll enter that, press select. And then the, the next two options are to customize the control for your particular application for temperature limits, high and low. So we'll just leave them at the default. In this case, it's 95 and 20 degrees. We'll turn on the HVAC fan whenever the ventilation is on. And we're gonna leave this at a code setting. That way the ventilation system will provide code required ventilation year round. So we select that and the control tells us we're done. So now this is how the control, this is what the display looks like when the control is set up. And it shows the amount of time per hour that this ventilation system is going to operate and that's based on the amount of airflow that's required and the amount of airflow that the system is delivering. And it's really easy for raters to confirm this by going into the, uh, to the rater verification menu. To do that, they simply press the select button and it shows them that it's 55 CFM is the required continuous ventilation. Press that again, and it shows that our measured CFM is 195 CFM. Now, if you do the math, 55 is required divided by 195 provided, that turns out to be 17 minutes per hour. So everything is available to the rater with the simple press of the button, the setting, the required continuous CFM, and the measured CFM. So what we've shown is the setup for the model 8140 ventilator. On the 8140, the control comes mounted to the unit. Also available is the 8140NC, which doesn't have a control. And there's a couple of options that can be done there. You could buy the control separately if you wanted to mount it to the return duct, for example. And that would be the model 8120X controller. Or you could wire the model 8140NC to an April Air thermostat. The April Air thermostat has all the same ventilation logic, the same easy entry, uh, information entry that the 8120X controller has. It's just one less thing on the wall. So no matter which ventilation system you buy, either the 8140 or the 8140NC, wiring it to either the April Air Control or an April Air Thermostat gives you super easy setup with the addition of the pressure ports on either of the models. Measuring airflow is as easy as connecting your pressure gauge, turning it on, and reading a value.